Ash dieback, also known as Calara fraxinea, was first found in Poland back in 1992. Now, since that time, it's become prevalent throughout Europe as the fungus has moved westwards and was recently then found in the UK back in 2012. In some senses, a lot of people are making the comparison to the Dutch elm disease, and we know how uh, bad that has been. You know, obviously we would need to know how the fungus attacks uh, ash trees. Really what it tends to do is to affect the leaves and then once it infiltrates the leaves it can get inside the tree itself. Often when you see ash trees um, and, and particularly if you see them during the periods of June, July, August when they're actually in green leaf then you'll find the leaf itself starts to go black and curled up. And you can also see changes in the colour of the stem itself. What happens is when it infects kind of young trees, you can see the stem will go from a nice light green colour to brown to eventually really dark colours towards uh, the overall crown. You'll also see how the leaf has blackened uh, and instead of falling off naturally will be hanging there. Sometimes you have to be careful that you don't uh, kind of misinterpret a black leaf for a, an ash key because in some senses they look very similar. Often you can see on the more mature trees that you see these kind of diamond shaped fissures on the bark itself where the fungus has really got inside the tree. And, and if, for instance, you know, I was able to, to cut uh, a tree where we see that diamond there, you'd be able to open it up inside, you'll see that it's all stained brown where the fungus has actually got in. And it's as that fungus then is then transmitted, can get all the way up the tree itself through the xylem. Once it takes over, then really that's the end of the ash tree. And this is why we're all very concerned about how we are going to be able to combat this disease. Currently, as far as we know, none of the normal fungicides will be able to uh, combat this particular fungus. We have to be very careful using fungicides because you can't really use loads of them in woodlands. So we need to understand how we can actually treat this fungus. Uh, conventional fungicides will, of course, kill both good and bad fungus. My laboratory has been working on how fungi respire. What processes do they do uh, in order to be able to survive and multiply? The fungus breathes in a similar way uh, to you and me in so much that they're using this in order to generate energy inside the cell that allows them to multiply. Now conventional fungicides target the way in which the fungus breathes and what we've been interested in is the particular actually points at which this fungicide attacks the fungus. So what's interesting is how the, the fungicide actually inhibits or kills the fungus. And during our work over a number of years, we've actually recognised that once fungi are attacked by a fungicide, they get stressed. And their stress results in the production of another pathway that circumvents the point at which the fungicide attacks the fungi. And so we've been looking at this particular protein and trying to investigate its shape and what it contains in order to develop a whole new set of fungicides. The fungicides are proving very effective at killing the ash dieback. I and my laboratory have been working on this protein 
that, that enables the fungi to survive in the presence of the fungicide uh, for about 40 years. Um, interestingly, it's not only found in fungi, but it's found in all plants. In addition, now to even some parasites that affect human and cause human diseases. I'm really interested in this particular protein and, and it's been my passion for all of these years. It was actually evolved about two billion years ago in some of the earliest organisms and it probably evolved under those conditions in order to combat oxygen coming into the atmosphere. Now until very recently it was really a black box. We didn't know how it operated and so over the last 10 years or so we've been trying to work out what it looks like in this black box and so recently we've been able to purify this black box to the point that we can actually open it up and actually discover what's inside of it. And the way that we do this is to purify the protein away from anything else. So it's 100% pure. And then we can bombard it with x-rays and then we use a lot of mathematical algorithms to take the reverse picture to give us a picture back of the protein itself. Knowing what's inside the black box the structure of this protein, we can now design very specific inhibitors that will target that protein. We've called these new inhibitors the AOX fungicides because the AOX stands for the alternative oxidase, which is the name of this protein. We're really excited about uh, this new development because it means that we can use it in our young plantations and in nurseries. We've got to be able to conserve our woodland and, and ash trees are so important to the United Kingdom landscape. And we don't want them to go the same way as the Dutch elm. Uh, and hopefully then by the development of this type of uh, fungicide, we maintain our ash trees for everyone to enjoy in the future.